Blog Talk Radio. Drop that down! It's the whole fucking show! Drop that down! in California. That means I'm a big shot in a small town like Savannah, where you're from, right? Well, not from, but at least you still live here. You know that I spent some time there, Dan Masters, and uh, you have all through the years made sure to hit me up and let me never forget that I never dropped the Cordial City Championship belt. I mean, here's a question for you. Was it the Cordial City Championship belt or was it the Peach State Wrestling Heavyweight Championship belt, because I've always been kind of confused about that, being the one wearing the gold and taking the pictures and defending it. I never really quite knew how that went. Maybe you could help me well, out. Well, we're, we're still waiting on you to drop the title. We've got a lot of people in line, and they've been waiting for a long time. But the Peach State Wrestling Championship and the Cordial City title are one and two. So, actually, you were two champions at once, which I'm sure that you're very familiar with being, of course, WWE champion and uh, ECW champion at the same time, right? Or something like that. Those are yeah, meaningless indeed. when you talk about titles such as the Cordial City Championship. Indeed, Dan Masters. Listen, uh, thanks for testing out, man. Before I hang up on you, did you want to say anything specific or are you just trying to reach out and you're just trying to make sure No, I'm just very reaching personal. out and I can't wait to hear your uh, open political views on the upcoming uh, race for presidency later on in the show. Dude, we got some stuff to cover over the next weeks for sure. All right, thanks for the call, Dan. See ya. All right, so I hit hang up, and it still says on air. Don't know why. There it goes. So there we go. It's official. You guys can hear me. That means RVD Radio is on live for the first time ever. Pretty excited about that. Um, I'd like to uh, take a moment and read from some outlines on some notes that I got here, but I don't have any notes. I'm not that kind of guy. I'm not that organized. I'm not that prepared. And I also don't need that, all right? So this is uh, RVD Radio, and this is my podium to speak about whatever I want to talk about. Since I'm planning on doing this, 
every week for a while, see how it goes. That's a lot of topics. Today, on uh, October 8th, to start off, we've chosen to do the uh, topics of censorship and individuality. We're also going to be talking about RVD TV and uh, a little bit about wrestling, which maybe we already covered with Dan Masters and Cordial City Wrestling from 1992. That was a long time ago. A lot of wrestlers came from that little organization. I remember a battle royal with uh, Raven and Cactus Jack and, uh, geez, um, Ben Hammer was in that thing, and Scorpio. <laughs> that was a lot. Uh, but that was then and now is now. And now I'm able to speak to you from an individual perspective about how important it is to me and how important it should be to you to be an individual. And uh, that is something that's not new to me, so I don't need to prepare to tell you. Obviously, my song, One of a Kind, my moves, all original, my look, original, in the ring. And um, that's important because you stand out. It's a good business position to take because you want people to remember you. But besides that, it's just good in life, you know. That's something I can say right now at 37 years old, looking back, I realize how important being uh, an individual is, and I compare that to being a kid, and I remember when you're a kid, it's not quite the same, you don't realize, you know, it, there's a lot of pressure, first off, being a kid, there's a lot of a lot of pressure on, um, you know, what you look like, you got to wear the right clothes, you got to hang out with the right people, you got to have the right look, you know, uh, that, was, that sucks, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it, I wouldn't trade it back, and uh, looking back, it's a it's it, it what kids got shit for, it's ridiculous, and it still is for adults. A lot of people get shit for being different, and and really, on a much greater scale, that's pretty much the uh, issues for for everything. Any every every contrast is about people thinking different. They see something different than you do when when you both look up at the stars, and, and thank God we're all individuals, you know. So, uh, I have never been one to conform. I've never my whole life really been able to just swallow um, what's fed to me uh, and just accept it as fact without thinking about it. It just never made sense to me. I remember in high school when uh, the teacher was trying to tell me how dangerous it was to do backflips, and it didn't make sense to me. It wasn't school. It was in the hallways. That's inappropriate. But I was like, uh, you know, Mr. Tenney, if I can do it and land on my feet, then it's safe. I, I don't understand it. I couldn't see that, yeah, you make rules, but they should be applied to the individual. Should not have some kind of test to find out if it's dangerous or not. That's just kind of the view that I have. But as an adult, we all still have that important role as individuals, and we all think differently, and it's important to think differently. It's important to question what's being told to you. It's it's important. Um, I use censorship as an, as an example here, okay? We're, we're brought up to believe that certain words are bad to say. Now, what does that mean, bad? Does that mean that God is frowning on you? God hates you for your choice, for calling that a, uh, you know, uh, for calling that body part a tit instead of a boob? Is that is that where you draw the line? Is that what's the difference? I mean, really, it's it's about what you're talking about with censorship, isn't it? I always thought that it was, um, and I still do. And, and I understand, you know, you have rules with society, and I understand that, you know, it, it, there's a time and a place for everything. I'm not saying that kids should be able to go around, hey, fuck you, fuck yeah. But the thing is, originally, we ruled those out. We ruled those as bad words. Otherwise, they would be able to say that, and we wouldn't have to be offended because they're not actually committing a violent crime or any crime at all except for against uh, some silly rules that were uh, that were put forth by people. I don't know if you ever thought about this, but it's it's got to be the way that it was. Back when we invented language, when we first started talking, way back in the day, if we decided, hey, you know, uh, the act of clubbing somebody over the head, we're going to call that clubbing them, all right? I'm going to club you. That's what that's going to mean. And then they decided, all right, now let's also have a way to say it. I'm going to fuck you up. And if you say that, then it's offensive. 
it should be prohibited. It shouldn't be said in language it should, around other people. It shouldn't be said if you're a kid. The same meaning. It should be the intention. I've always had a hard time with that. So uh, if you think about that, and, uh, and, and you know, j just to think. I'm not saying, you know, you can go out because society has its rules. I mean, they're set. The thing is, what harm would it be if we if we outlawed swear words? If we decided, okay, from now on, no matter what you say, the words aren't going to be considered offensive. Then what what harm is done? You know, in a few years, some kids, you know, would say, hey, you know, fuck, it's a beautiful day, mom. We should go to the beach, and, and she wouldn't know to go. Oh, I should wash your mouth out with soap. There'd be no reason for that, you know. RVD TV is an online reality show that I've been doing ever since my contract expired back last June from WWE. I had served my time there, contrary to some of the rumors you might have believed, uh, didn't get fired, didn't quit. I just finished. My contract was up. Um, we talked about me signing a new deal, and ultimately I decided not to sign the new contract in favor of taking a break because I needed to clear my head. I got tired of all of the aspects of being on the road, the, the traveling, the monotony of uh, being with all those guys and dealing with all the, the political bullshit. And uh, everything about it, you know, just wore me down. And when I asked for time off, they started double booking me. So when my contract was up, that was my out. That was, that was my chance to say, okay, it's up to me now. And I'm still in that frame of mind, not ready to go back yet. I'm sure I'll get asked a lot, you know, hey, when you coming back, RVD? I don't know. I don't know. I got open doors, and I do have interest, you know, maybe in someday going back and taking a bow, you know, and, uh, you know, hitting that hitting that high from that energy, from uh, the welcome I would get from the fans, you know, sometime. But really, I'm really enjoying the not traveling very much and staying home right now. So what I've been doing since WWE is um, RVD TV. It's a project uh, of my own on my website, robvandam.com. And it's uh, it's real life. I mean, it's not scripted. It's, it's, it's all brought together by what I do in my real life. Several times throughout the week, I have these thought-provoking conversations like I'm trying to have with you guys, but it's one-sided at this moment. I do have a lot of callers, and we'll take uh, some calls and, and talk to you pretty soon. But the idea uh, that, I mean, in a normal day in the Van Damme household, we might talk about uh, government, we might talk about death, you know, spirituality, positive energy, we might we might uh, talk about uh, war on drugs. It's just, uh, it's, it's we like to throw out opinions, we like to think, you know what I mean? Now, I was told when I was a little kid that uh, saying fuck is bad, okay? And, okay, so we, it's bad, but but, but why? I mean, it's bad because people said that it's bad, that's all. I mean, you know, if I say, hey, you know, I really fucking love you listeners, man, I really fucking appreciate you listening to me. Fucking A, man, I really fucking appreciate your support. Now, are you, should you be offended by that, by my choice to use those words when I could just, I could say trucking or lucking, and guess what, then it's okay. Then, uh, then you don't get uh, banned, uh, censored from TV and radio. And, you know, if I say something that, that's not chosen as offensive words that get the point across, you know, I can't stand you and your greasy little slimy head and your fat, stinky belly and you smell bad. I mean, you could offend somebody using words that are okay much more than using words that, that have been prohibited, such as I said, you know, like, hey, thanks for calling in. You, you guys fucking rock. You guys get my point, right? I just can't. Not only can I not stop thinking outside the box. I can't even think inside the box. And that comes across in every which way. Uh, a lot of people that come meet me say that I'm, that I'm unique in a lot of different ways. And I'm okay with that. I'm good. I'm happy with that. In fact, I don't understand other people who aren't, people who just believe uh, whatever they've been told, you know, without thinking about it. The older I get, the more I think about stuff. It was like last week or the week before, I was talking to Sonia and I was like, wait a second, how did Ben Franklin discover electricity? He had a kite and he flew it up in the sky and lightning struck. And no, fuck no, that never happened. You know what I mean? 
No, that didn't happen. I, I'm sure that I don't care if, if if science says, yeah, we have proof of the fucking key that lightning burnt. Dude, I'm sorry, but I'm not buying that. And, and it's something I never thought of till like last week or the week before because you just accept bullshit. But come on. I've had a, a kite that was a 1,000 feet on a string once when I was a kid. It was like way, way up there, and I'm sure that was nowhere near. And besides, the whole thing with lightning, what are the chances – that it's going to hit that. If chances would be, att- if the electricity would be attracted to that little key, then wouldn't every single airplane that ever went up get struck? I used to always get yelled at when I was a kid for swimming when it was raining out because lightning might strike the pool. Is is lightning ever struck that pool ever? Like in the 20 years we've been here? No. Is um, my location being in the pool going to increase the chance of lightning hitting it? No, of course not. It only increases the chance of lightning hitting me by the amount of space the pool takes up compared to the space that I take up. Plus, the water will suck it in a little bit more. That's all. I mean, that, that's just common sense. I just have to have uh, some reasons for things. So that's the way. Uh, that's that's some of the ways you know that. I mean, you guys don't know me that well, but I, I have. I think things through, you know, and uh, so. What we're going to do today is uh, talk about uh, some some censorship and what is its real purpose in society, all right? RVD TV was put out with the purpose of an outlet for me to get these uh, these conversations and these thoughts out. I talk with a lot of, uh, of my friends. A lot of them are celebrities. We do a, a segment called Friends in High Places. And uh, on Friends in High Places, we discuss topics and, uh, you know, and it's good because it makes people open up and search their heart and their brain and find out how they feel about things. We don't research it. We don't uh, spend time rehearsing for these shows, you know. We just say, boom, hey, you know, what do you think about this? Deep subjects, you know. What do you think about abortion? Ooh, tough one. Who wants to throw their balls out on the line like that and say which way they go, right? But the real uh, situations and these conversations we can all connect on on the same level because no matter how important you are, no matter how rich, famous you are, whatever, we're still real people that still have real thoughts when it comes to our mor- our mortality, our, our place here on Earth. Um, so I read TV is at robvandam.com, and uh, it's something that you're going to hear me talking about a lot on RVD Radio. I uh, have a lot of fun with it. We have a new show out every single Friday, so I've got over 40 episodes now because I started this in January. And... Uh, Members, RVD TV watchers, get uh, access to every single episode. You can see I've got my workouts on there. I've got a lot of fun activities. And I've got thoughts, uh, conversations like this. I got to sit down with Taboo from uh, the Black Eyed Peas and uh, Kevin Turner, who's uh, one of my agents up there in Hollywood. And we had a discussion about censorship. This uh, aired on RVD TV, and I grabbed a clip of it. I'd like to share it with you. So uh, hang out and listen to about four minutes and 20 seconds of RVD TV, give or take a few seconds. And uh, we'll come back to you after that. The whole thing, the whole thing, the whole thing about swear words doesn't make sense to me. And, and you'll notice if you watch RVD TV, I have what you would call a potty mouth. I do. I use adult language because I'm an adult. Mm. And I know that it's inappropriate around kids, so I try not to do that. But. The whole thing about it being inappropriate, where did that come from? What a huge waste of energy that is. Some time ago, we invented this language, and we came up with words to describe everything. And then we came up with another list and said, these words are going to mean the same thing, but they're going to be taboo. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. No offense, taboo. (laughs) No pun intended. (laughs) But um, what I mean by that is, you know, why did one day they say, okay, this is a but. Let's also call it an ass, but when you say that, we'll be offended by it. <gasps> to me, that doesn't make any sense. What purpose does swear words serve in society? I thought maybe since you're a parent, maybe you could help me understand from your perspective how you see that. Well, first and foremost, uh, being in a group Black Eyed Peas, we've had censorship uh, put against our songs. Sure. We have a song called Don't Funk With My Heart, which we had a, a change to Don't Mess With My Heart because the radio's station said that it sounds too close to don't fuck with my heart right so they're like you know the the uh the intent to to put to put that out there was it's too close to the actual bad word so right. they made us change that 
We also had a song called Let's Get Retarded on yes. our on our record. Um, we changed it to Let's Get It Started because of the fact that we, you know, the NBA Finals, they wanted to use that as their theme song. So we couldn't say Let's Get Retarded at, at the basketball game, so we changed it to Let's Get It Started. Okay. So we've always been kind of put into the whole censor censorship, uh, um, I guess, at the forefront of it because of we're in the music industry and a lot of times they try to do that. They try to shut us down. So me, I'm I'm more about learning about it and not trying to to uh, put up a big stink about it because of the fact that I have a son, 13-year-old son, that he's going to be learning about life and, and things that come along with, with, uh, with growing up. Like you said, you're an adult. I'm an adult as well. I try to teach my son as much value and as much uh, um, progressive thoughts as possible because I want him to grow up the way that I grew up learning and appreciating the fact that we have an outlet to present to the world as expression, sure. being able to be musicians. Um, I think that, you know, and I don't have any kids, but I believe if I had uh, children, I believe that um, I would tell them not to use swear words around other adults just because adults are brainwashed to think that, they're, that, that you're offending them, but I certainly wouldn't say... <gasps> If you use the S word, go wash your mouth out with soap. And, and what message does that send to a kid? Are you telling a child if they use a swear word that like God is standing there next to them, frowning at them, they're gonna burn in hell because they decide to call it a dick instead of a penis? Which, by the way, I got bleeped on the Man Show twice for using the word penis. Not even the same words are okay here that are okay here. And as time goes on, now we can say ass, now we can say dick. If you watch Comedy Central, you can say anything on there. So but, far. Exactly, and, and, and there's, there's entertainment, and then there's real life, and it started with real life. Somebody decided, okay, these words, when you hear them, your ears should burn, you should be offended, regardless of intention of how they said. It's more, there are a couple different issues that you're talking about. One, as far as funk, I mean, that created a whole genre of music. Mm -hmm. So I don't really think they should, per se, not allow you to use that particular word, because it's, it's, it's where the music came from. Yeah. Uh, we all have boundaries. There are things that we want to do, things that we think about doing, we know we can't do. And I think it's okay for children to have boundaries and restrictions, because if they don't, there's anarchy. All righty, so that's RVD TV. I'm going to take a call right now and see you if uh, people are tuning in and checking out the subject. Okay, go ahead, dude. You're on RVD Radio. Speak now. Forever hold your peace. All right, hold your peace. Good thing the uh, good thing this isn't a video show. I don't want to see what it looks like holding his peace. But I am going to go to this number, who is a uh, guest of mine, Dr. Sean Stasiak. Are you on? Okay, this is obviously something that I'm doing fucked up because there's no way this is on air. Sweet dude, this is awesome. Oh, let me see. Can you hear me? <laughs> this is fun. All right. Well, uh, I will uh, try another one. Caller ID. You're on air. You're on the air. I'm putting you all on the air until somebody answers. Because I got a guest. All right. I guess I don't know how to... Uh, how to... Oh, I muted the host. All right, let me see if I can recover here really quick. I don't have anybody in my studio to help me out. Somehow, doing the soundbite seems to have screwed me up. So, when I hit on the air to take the callers, nothing's going on. Hello, hello, can you hear me? I'm getting pissed. It's a good thing I believe in swearing. <laughs> Motherfucker. All right, well, then I'll just talk some more. I don't even know if you guys can hear me, but... uh if you can't, then there's no harm in this, right? So that was Taboo from uh, Black Eyed Peas and Kevin Turner. And uh, this is a thing we do on RVD TV a lot. You know, and it's where I express my individualism. It's by uh, discussing subjects. We did uh, gun control. We did um, government issues, which, oh, that's a huge one right now. And um, let's see, we've talked about marijuana prohibition, which we'll definitely get around to right here on RVD Radio. 
Hey, Dr. Sean, how come you can't come through? Hmm. All right. Um, what do you guys do? Is it time to give up on the callers? I was going to take callers in. It worked fine for uh, Mr. Dan Masters. It seems like not only was he the first caller, he was the only caller. All right. So uh, I'm going to put Taboo back on and try and fix something here. I think I am. Taboo, the Black Eyed Peas. Mm. The whole thing about... Mm. The whole thing about swear words doesn't make sense to me. And, and you'll notice if you watch RVD TV, I have what you would call a potty mouth. I do. I use adult language because I'm an adult. Mm. And I know that it's inappropriate around kids, so I try not to do that. But the whole thing about it being inappropriate, where did that come from? What a Hello? huge waste of energy that is. Some time ago, we invented oh, this I language, and we came up with words to describe everything. And then we came up with another list and said, these words are going to mean the same thing, but they're going to be taboo. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. No offense, no. taboo. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> but um, what I mean by that is, you know, why did one day they say, okay, this is a but. Let's also call it an ass, but when you say that, we'll be offended by it. <gasps> To me, that doesn't make any sense. What purpose does swear words serve in society? I thought maybe since you're a parent, maybe you could help me understand from your perspective how you see that. Well, first and foremost, uh, being in a group Black Eyed Peas, we've had censorship uh, put against our songs. Sure. We have a song called Don't Funk With My Heart, which we had a, a change to Don't Mess With My Heart because the radio station said that it sounds too close to Don't Fuck With My Heart. Right. So they're like, you know, the... the uh, the intent to to put to put that out there was it's too close to the actual bad words, so right. they made us change that. We also had a song called "Let's Get Retarded" on yes. our on our record. Um, we changed it to "Let's Get It Started" because of the fact that we you know the NBA Finals they wanted to use that as their theme song. So we couldn't say "Let's Get Retarded" at, at the basketball game, so we changed it to "Let's Get It Started." Okay. So we've always been kind of put into the whole censor censorship, uh, um, I guess, at the forefront of it because of we're in the music industry and a lot of times they try to do that, they try to shut us down. So me, I'm, I'm more about learning about it and not trying to, to uh, put up a big stink about it because of the fact that I have a son, 13 year old son, that he's gonna be learning about life and, and things that come along with, with, uh, with growing up. Like you said, you're an adult, I'm an adult as well. I try to teach my son as much value and as much uh, um, progressive thoughts as possible because I want him to grow up the way that I grew up learning and appreciating the fact that we have an outlet to present to the world as expression sure. being able to be musicians um, I think that you know and I don't have any kids but I believe if I had uh, children I believe that um, I would tell them not to use swear words around other adults just because adults are brainwashed to think that they're that, that you're offending them but I certainly wouldn't say <gasps> If you use the S word, go wash your mouth out with soap. And, and what message does that send to a kid? Are you telling a child if they use a swear word? Okay, so I just hit stop on there. I know you've heard it twice, and what's happening is I'm trying to take callers, but for some reason, callers are not coming through, so we may not be able to hear. Ooh, say something, somebody. A voice just came through. Bummer. I had a little hope spot there. I heard an echo come true of me. And I thought that was some hope that uh, a caller would be on. So I'm answering all these calls, and uh, for some reason, uh, I got a message that tech guys are working on the switchboard. So I'll just keep talking. Uh, I was going to talk to Dr. Sean, who is following my show. He's going to have uh, his own blog talk radio show starting tonight, immediately following. Sean's a good friend of mine. He was in WWE way back uh, like the first year or two that I started. I started riding with him after 9-11. Uh, I used to ride with Mike Awesome, who was a friend of his, and that's how we got put together. And eventually we became really good friends. And uh, Sean uh, took a break from wrestling and went to doctor school, and now he's so fucking smart. He doesn't even understand when you ask him a question about your body. He breaks out into this other doctor language. It's really impressive. You know, he knows a lot. And he's a chiropractor, and he's helped a lot of people. And he knows a lot about health and nutrition. You can call him and ask him about workouts or about uh, your diet. He 
you can ask them about the body. A lot of people don't believe in chiropractors, and I know over the years I've had some shitty chiropractors, but uh, some really, really good ones too. Very few. The one that I have right now is the best, and I've had a few like him over the years. A good chiropractor can tell you what's wrong with your body. I've gone into the chiropractor uh, and not even told them, and it'll be something really weird like uh, something on my hip, you know, or a rib will be out, or a clavicle, you know. It's not just about your spine. A lot of people don't realize that. And I've gone in there before. Doctor does his little check, you know, where he has he lines up your shoulders, your feet, and a good chiropractor will say, "Wow, uh, you you've uh, you know pulled your hip out of line here. This is different for you." I've had about three like that in my long career of wrestling, you know, that I could count on. The one uh, that I have right now is definitely like that. And so uh, I, I recommend them, you know, to people that are having problems with their body. You pull your spine out of whack, everything else is going to follow. I mean, that is just the main foundation of your whole body. And when it twists, then, then one side of your muscles have to stretch, the other side have to, like, loosen up, and then they're slack, you know, and then they develop to get shaped like that. There's a lot to it. And I know, you know, you go to see a chiropractor, and he says, okay, i got to see you three times a week for the next several weeks, and, and a lot of it you think might just be a scam to, you know, to rape your insurance or to charge you if your insurance won't pay for it. But I can tell you that I depend on a chiropractor. In fact, all the wrestling I do, all the DDTs you've seen me take on my head, all the suplexes and stuff, I'm really, really bad about getting massages. I like them. They feel good. I know they're good for me, but I end up getting, uh, I'd say, about one a year. I just suck at it. It's one of those things where every week I say to Sonia, oh, let's go get massages today. That'd be so good. But I never make it. There's a lot of things on a list like that, by the way. But uh, massage being one of it. The chiropractor, I do go and see him. Uh, he knows my body well. He knows uh, he's, he's seen me in some uh, really bad shape. He's seen me in good shape. He's put me in good shape. So uh, I'm pretty proud that Dr. Sean Stasiak is also um, a chiropractor now. And it's a career that he's just kind of getting started into. So um having the education that he has, you know, he needs to find his place out there in a chiropractor world where uh, he can find his niche and be huge and help a lot of people. So I wanted to call and ask him uh, a health-related question, give you guys an idea of what to expect from uh, from his show. Now, I just got a message to press F5 on my keyboard, so let's see. <laughs> F5. F5. I hit F5. Did it do anything? I don't know. Um, Dr. Sean? Dr. Sean, can you hear me yet? No, I got worked into pressing F5. F5 didn't do shit. Or do I got to hit command in F5? Control? Yeah, you can tell I'm pretty uh, smart on the uh, computer. So uh, it's a real good idea for me to have a show like this without any help. Hey, I just heard a voice. I think I might have actually done something that time. Hello. Dr. Sean. Hey, someone just spoke through my computer. And it wasn't Dr. Sean. Hello? Yeah, who's this? Who am I speaking with? This is this is Quick. I'm from the Seattle area. Hey, dude, you got through, man. You broke through the force field, dude. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. About time, man. Uh, hey, so what's up, man? Welcome to RVD Radio, man. This is uh, oh. quite an experience so far. What's going on? Uh, not much. I, I, I saw this. Uh, saw the advertisement for your show on. Uh... Hey, did I just lose you? Sweet, I just lost him. Who cut him off, man? That ain't right. Sorry, dude. Wow. Well, this is the first show. I'm not sweating it because uh, I'm going to do another show next Friday, or Wednesday, rather. Shit, what day is this? And uh, do another show, and another show. So uh, I'm not really sweating it too bad. So this will be an experience. This will be an archive. People can listen to how fucked up this was, and I will too. But I think I'm just about to uh, give up on, ooh, holy cow, my, my switchboard just did something really crazy. Um, holy cow, what is that? 
Hello, switchboard. I'm going to talk to my screen. I was doing better. I was doing better without trying to take calls, wasn't I? So anyway, uh, the whole inspiration behind the RVD radio and RVD TV is uh, to get you to know the real me because the real drive, the real passion that I have doesn't have a whole lot to do with uh, defending a, a, a prop, a television prop in your hometown. Hey, it's something that I'm good at. But... It's, uh, it's something that right now I'm taking a break from. Uh, the network right now is having major tech issues, so um, my first show seems to be uh, experiencing the impact from it. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's because I have so many calls. I knew when we got the IVD radio show we were going to have way more calls than they ever expected. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's what's causing the problem here. I'm going to take some calls and talk to them, along with uh, hitting you guys with uh, my subject, Sean Stasiak, and also Chris Masters, who I think uh, is in the other room. I think I hear him in the other room. He was uh, arriving here at the Casa de Van Damme uh, a little bit late. And I think he's uh, hopefully going to pop in here in a minute and uh, see what's going on with him. Chris Masters uh, left the WWE a little while ago, um, and he's been keeping pretty busy doing independent wrestling shows and still traveling. So he can he can talk to you about how that's going. I've been a little bit out of it, although I have taken a few select bookings here and there, and. Uh, mostly uh, those being international big organizations. I went to Japan for Inoki in August and in September. Um, no, I'm sorry. This is, we just had September. September I had my anniversary. But I also uh, had been wrestling for this company in Spain who also has Chris Masters headlining his their cards. So I've had a chance, you know, to hang out with Chris a lot over the summer over in Spain, and um, that's been a good experience, and so uh, he's he's uh, one of my friends in my circle, he'll probably be on our PD radio uh, quite a bit, I would imagine, All right, so um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to take your calls or not, as I'm talking, I'm, I'm playing with the switchboard, uh, trying to get the calls uh, to come through, so far unsuccessfully, uh, so, you know, I appreciate uh, the people calling in, and, and like I said, we're going to do this again. Holy cow, we have a lot of phone calls. I just I just learned how to make my window bigger, and I uh, noticed a huge list of calls, and I wish I could take all of them, uh, but instead, it looks like I can take none of them. So, uh, this show might not be about phone calls, but we will do it again next week. I think Wednesday is a good night for this, but the presidential debate is next week. And so uh, we're going to switch times. I think we might be doing it at 4 o'clock. Just uh, check back with my profile to get that information and uh, and to see what time uh, and to see what we're talking about. My plan for right now is to talk about uh, addiction next week and brain damage with Chris Nowinski, Harvard graduate. Wouldn't that be fun? And uh, we'll talk about that next week. But you're going to learn that uh, I have – I have opinions that are backed by logic, and I'm not afraid to share them with you, even even at the cost of having some of you disagree with me. I don't mind that. In fact, I expect that. And I think that we all have our own individual opinions, and, you know, I might even help you realize how you feel about certain things. You know? Okay, so caller muted. Hello? Yo. Hello. Hello, this is uh, Carlos. Hello. Yo. Hello? Yo. Yo, what's happening? Who's this? Uh, is this uh, blogtalkradio.com? Yeah, I'm trying to talk to Rob Van Dam. Oh, so am I. <laughs> yeah, I think he's got the thing all fucked up. Uh, he probably does. He never gets for a show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll see what happens, man. Wow. I just hey. connected two people together, but neither one of them can hear me. Dude, did you hear hey. me? I can hear both of you guys. Hey, hey what Rob, the fuck, man? <laughs> hey, uh, 
Come on in, Masterpiece. Okay, listen, I can hear both of you guys. If you can hear me, then uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. I can hey, hear you, you, brother. What's up, Chris Masterpiece? Dude, this, this, has been, uh, this has been crazy so far. Uh, they're having technical difficulties with the website. I haven't been able to take any phone calls. But uh, just as you walked in, I got two people here. So go tell Sonia to give you the phone. Oh, no, it's right here. And, uh, hey, guys, uh, you are joined by Chris Masters right now, who uh, who just walked into the room. So uh, let me put him on, too, so you guys can hit us all. Line two, bitch, line two. Line up. Um... Just, uh, yeah, not really, dude. I haven't been able to take any calls. Okay, guys, what? what's going on? Carlos and somebody else. Oh, it's a good concept, but, man, I had a feeling going to fuck up. Same, I, yeah, I hear you, bro. Radio station, man. I know. Fucking high up on Dallas, all organized and orchestrated. Hey, like Sean. Sean. Hello, hello, brother. Can you hear me? Hello, hello. <laughs> I can hear you. Mr. Zaziak. Oh, my Sean. God. I got through. Yeah, dude, we hear you bitching over there. I don't know what's been going on, but you're through now. We're through. You're through. What up, dude? You see, bitching works. It got me through. Okay. All right. Well, now that you're through, man, you got through. Chris Masters just arrived. We got like 19 minutes left on the show. Not quite how I planned the show going so far. I don't know if you've been listening, but uh, I've anyway, been the whole time, time Rob. I've been hearing everything you've been saying, and I've been screaming on this phone. And you know what? I think Chris Masters brought in good energy. As soon as he walked to the door, everybody got through. Uh, we're ready to roll now, right? <laughs> right. Let's yeah. take these phone calls. Yeah. Hey, Chris, what, are, what have you been up to, dude? You're doing indies. You're, you're going around. Uh, did you, just get, you just had a bad experience with an indie promoter. And I've always, you know, I've been wrestling for uh, shit, almost 20 years. So Chris sometimes uh, looks to me for advice. You know, he started... Uh, in a different position, I worked my way up from the bottom, working crappy shows in front of three or you know four people, no money, starving, working my way up. Chris, just like Stasiak, kind of got a better idea uh, or a better deal to start with. So to go back to the indie scenes from there, they have to learn a whole different business. And I try to invi- advise both of them. I try to advise them so they don't get ripped off. And uh, Chris, you had an experience to share with us. Oh, yeah, it was terrible. And uh, this is a good thing to cover, actually, because there's a lot of, uh, quote-unquote, Mark indie promoters out there who are going to want to book uh, so-and-so on top of so-and-so on top of so-and-so, but then they don't have the money to cover it. You know what I mean? This is the business. If you're going to run an indie show, you have to have the funds in order to whether you're going to take a loss or you're going to win for your talent. And uh, I never had a problem with that, actually, throughout the whole year since I left WWE, but I went down to work in West Virginia this week and uh, let it be known to everybody listening out there, uh, remember this name because uh, uh, he's this guy completely screwed me and uh, quite a few other talent. I, it's actually posted on the Internet right now, but uh, his name is uh, Dennis, uh, a.k.a. Shady Richardson. He runs out of... Uh, Virginia, well, more specifically West Virginia this time, but it was on Saturday, and uh, yeah, that guy just completely screwed us, didn't have mu- any money by the end of the show, and I've only heard of these situations, so that's why I do go to, you know, a person like Rob, and I'm like, I know he's been through this, you know, it's like, you know, I, I couldn't believe it, I'm in disbelief, I go all the way to West, Vir- West Virginia, I leave my comfortable, beautiful house in Los Angeles, go to West Virginia of all places, don't even get paid? Yeah, bro, then unfortunately, you know, that that can happen. That's why I'm taking very few selections. I have promoters uh, emailing me every every day, you know, wanting me to wrestle for Mississippi Championship, this, that, that. No, no interest. I wrestled for Anoki, who's the top guy in Japan, you know, and then um, this group that we wrestled for in Spain, they had 10,000 people sold out arenas. That's that's all I'm interested in right now, not so much moving back, working for uh, a guy like that is basically just a fan that somehow got organized enough to just pull together what could uh, appear to be a wrestling show on the outside, like a deck of cards. Oh, yeah. A house of cards, Chris, not a deck of house. Yeah, but then even the kicker is the guy doesn't even have my travel. Nor, well, not to put on the spot. I know she won't care, though, because she wants us out there. But ODB of TNA, another one, we're both uh, driving into Charleston, uh, to Charleston Airport. 
uh, we both have no fly home. So this guy's a real douchebag or uh, a hole or whatever kind of language I can use here. Pretty much anything I assume. But so hey, today's episode is about censorship, Master Pete. Okay, all right, thank you. Like, this guy is not uh, a very good person. And uh, I would advise any uh, indie workers or anybody out there be aware. Be aware of uh, his name is Shady. I mean, get you know. I should have realized right there with the hey, name Chris. like Shady. Maybe I shouldn't be working for this guy. But, again, it's Dennis and Shady Richardson. So don't go work for him, Dr. Sean. Hey, hey Chris. Yeah. Chris Masters. Yes, Mr. Stasiak, Dr. Sean. Hey, um, well, let me ask you this. Do you ever think about, before you ever commit to something like that, I mean, this is, this is what I do with Indies if I do them at all. You'd be very, very selective is do you, um, you know, get get a deposit, get something up front, you know what I mean? Because and make sure you have all that stuff in place, the travel, everything. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad you asked that. Uh, again, I, that, that's perfect, a uh, good point, because I uh, talked to Rob about this earlier, but I already had my mind decided. See, uh, you know, this is still new to me. I never worked indies, you know, like that's why I, uh, you know, Rob's worked indies, and, you know, a lot of my other friends even know I've worked indies so they know it better, but, um, most people I know do do that. They take, you know, half the top deposit up front. <laughs> do, 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 do. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, you take, get, get, yeah, I, I know what you're saying. Get the half deposit and then make sure you get the other half uh, before, preferably for me, while I'm in my gear, before I go to the ring, I want that other half. And that's just how the business changes. One guy messes it up. And, uh, you know, then from this point on now, you know, I have to look out for my best interest. So, I mean, that's definitely what I'm going to do. Well, of all, well, of all the name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, Robin is nice. Nice sound clip. Hey, yeah, I'm sorry that happened to you, but it's an experience, and I'm sure it's not going to happen again, you know, so just, um, you know, you, you'll, you'll learn from that experience, but I'm sorry you had to go through that. But uh, that's part of the business, man. That's the indies for you. Just be careful. Oh, yeah. That. That's just something I had to go through, I think. I want, you know, like, that's why so many guys are so adamant about it. I I never felt like I had to until it finally happened to me, like uh, every other wrestler I'm sure has had it happen to them, and then it's done from that point on. That's, yeah, One thing I, don't, I would always demand is just saying you want half the money up front. I even get like uh, my attorney friend to put up a little mini contract saying that when I do arrive, uh, I, it locks me into them because it's not like I'm going to stand them up, uh, and it locks them to pay me the other half. As soon as I get off that plane, before I even go to the show, before I even leave the hotel, I want my second half of the, of the agreement, and then that way both parties have agreed, and, and uh, they, you know, it works out that way. So, Sean, I hope you get a, a lot of callers on your show afterwards. I wanted to, uh, you know, try to uh, promote a little bit what you're doing. I mean, you basically you don't even understand the uh, the limitless uh, amount of resources you have in your head right now, knowing everything about the body, and plus on your own time, you're into nutrition and and you know you exercise and you're all ripped right now and shit, but. Uh, the show's only got like 13 minutes. I got a bunch of callers. I'm going to try and take some of the calls. And, uh, That's and fine. That's the I'm going to call into your show for a while. I just want to say thanks for having me on. It was good talking to you guys, Rob. I think it's going to be a kick-ass show. And then once we get these technical difficulties completely straightened out, I think it's going to be a, a kick-ass show for you and me both. So I'm excited for, for uh, you know, I'm really excited for it. I know you've been wanting to do this for a long time. So here we are. All right, dude. Cool, man. Good luck, and uh, we'll talk to you in a little bit. Dr. Sean. Boom. Right. Okay, boom. Okay, let's see if I can take another one. We might have it fixed, dude. I'm going to click here and see if we get another caller. Do we have somebody on the air, Chris Masturbator? I don't know. You tell me. Hello? Hello? Hello, caller. Hello? Yeah, we're, hey, dude, what's up? Welcome to RVD Radio. You're on with Chris Masters. Rob Van Dam, and even Sonia, who just walked into the room and brought us a present. SVD. 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 You're doing great, by the way, aren't you, baby? I am doing good. You're doing so awesome. I love you. I love you. Mm. So what's up, caller? We hear you. All right. Um, I was I was listening to what you were talking about uh, in the whole swearing thing at the beginning of the show, and it's something that i kind of been going through the last couple of years. Like when I was younger, my parents were always, you know, harping on me not to swear, and when I was like 15, 16, I started swearing a little bit more, and now it's just kind of a casual thing with me. It really doesn't affect me, but my parents are always, you know, really quick to jump on me, you know, whenever, you know, even if I say damn or hell, then, you know, it's like it's not appropriate language, and I can understand the context of not saying like, you know, fuck around my parents, but I'm 
I'm not really sure, like, you know, what the big deal is anymore. I mean, obviously in, you know, like a, uh, an employment setting, it wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be prudent to use, you know, offensive language like that. But I'm, I really don't see why people get so, so defensive of, you know, not using bad language or some, right. some stuff. And, and since we know that they are, and that is part of the structure of today's society, then of course we respect it. But to, to really think about the control, I mean, that is control. You're, they're, they're controlling what we can say. I mean, that is your birthright, your freedom. When you pronounce a word, whether you say truck or fuck or lick or dick, the difference is how you place your lips, how your tongue hits your teeth, and, and that is the actual action. You're not committing a bad action, and, and what you mean by it isn't always bad. Like we said, you know, Chris, I'm glad you fucking joined me, bro. I don't mean anything bad by that. I mean the, the best of it. I fucking love you, bro. You know what I mean? Why should you be yeah. offended? Because I chose to say I fucking love you instead of saying, you know, I freaking, and that's something, too. Why can I say uh, in the most offensive way, I can say, oh, this frickin' day, friggin', freaking, frickin', that's all perfectly acceptable. You can say that on any Disney movie, but just the word fuck, who decided that this specific word is something we want to control and, and prohibit? I mean, it's almost like saying you can't stand on your left foot. I want to have that control and decide if you stand on your left foot and raise your right foot, that's a no-no, that's bad. Because think about it. We're told here in America, if you put your middle finger up, that's a no-no. You're swearing. And really, in Brazil, you stick your thumb up, it means fuck off. Here, it means good luck. In England, it's this, Chris. You hold your two fingers out like a peace sign. Totally different. So it's not even the same. And, of course, the words aren't the same from country to country. It, it, it seems like a big waste of energy to me. I'm still thinking yeah. about the fact that you told me you love me twice within two a uh, two minute span. I love you, bro, in the most heterosexual, <laughs> platonic way. Okay, just checking on that. <laughs> right on, dude. Well, uh, thanks for the call, and we're not going to say mom and dad are wrong, but I am going to ask them to be open minded and try to think about why did they originally decide to tell you that saying uh, shit was really bad, but saying poop is a okay. What well, fuck? Exactly. Yeah. Do we have another caller? Or ass. Is someone on the line with us? Speak, speak. I'm going to go through here, Chris, and I'm going to uh, try to take these calls. And then when I hit it and it says on air, I'm only going to know when they answer me. Well, we'll try to get them. Yeah. It says. Why is it that the exact same uh, meaning applies to all of them, but some of them are considered a crime in our society? Well, it's like uh, I got a, a good one for you that I'm sure every woman probably on this planet hates, uh, and I'm, we've, all, we've all used it. But and you go to some place like Ireland and they use it in casual conversation. Now, how about the word cunt? Ooh, that's a good one. You know, because like uh, in the, the United States here, that term, especially if it's used towards a woman, is like the worst possible word you could use, at least to a woman, I believe. But then you go other places like, uh, you know, in the Europe or Ireland, I know they use kind of casual conversation, you know. And it's hey, just, how's it going? Cutting you fucking cut. Yeah, exactly. Give me some eggs, cut. Yeah, well. <laughs> I think that's a really good example, actually, that came to mind. Shouldn't it be about the meaning? I mean, if you want to offend somebody, shouldn't it, shouldn't you be able to offend them by, by what you mean? I mean, I could, if I just use chosen words, it's basically just like uh, killing somebody with a Nerf football. You're still killing them either way, you know, if I, you know what I mean? But not everybody know. I don't think everybody knows. I might know that you don't mean, hey, what what the fuck's going on if you say that to me, but not everybody necessarily knows uh, RVD like I do. You know what I mean? Maybe. RVD, motherfucker! RVD, motherfucker! You recognize that, bro, that voice? That, wasn't that, uh, play it again. Ah, uh, fuck, I don't even, dude. Who was it? Was that me? Let's try it again. RVD, motherfucker! That's Bruce Jingles. Is it? Yeah. No way. Oh, he was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. From the improv. So I hit this button here. It says on air. It says I got a caller from 614, which uh, 
think is Ohio, but guess what? Nobody's speaking to me. Speak, speak. We got five minutes remaining in the show. We weren't able to take calls this time, which is going to be a big part of the show. Uh, I am still going to try on the way out, so I got a big list of calls here. And uh, if you don't want to hang up yet and you want to hold on until the end, you might get through. A few calls well, at this through. point, they're probably exercising their free right to curse, uh, seeing as that they've probably been waiting so long. We're, That's a safe bet. Yes. And feel free to do so. Here's the deal. If you're calling in and uh, you hear us and you think you're on the air, just start talking because we're not going to know. Our our uh, switchboard is fucked up. And on the very first premiere of RVD Radio, I wasn't even allowed to take calls from uh, the people. Don't well, if it's going to happen on any episode, it's best to happen on the first. <laughs> I, at least at least people can understand that. Yeah. That's, oh, that's not a good F5. Let's see if that does anything. I think <clears> um so anyway it was cool anyway because i mean like i said i can do this for four hours by myself i don't i don't of course have the uh the the chore of listening to myself but i do do know that i got a lot to say and i've been talking for about 55 minutes so far and i've been talking a little bit about uh rvd tv i played a little a little clip from it you know and i took maybe two or three calls and that's that's about all i had but uh, mostly, Chris, today just to introduce uh, RVD Radio and introduce the uh, the real Rob Van Dam that you know, that my friends know, the the one that thinks about stuff and asks you to think about stuff, too. Uh, we kind of attack that just by talking about censorship, talking about um, the uh, individualism, you know, which will always be a topic because I always speak as an individual. And I'm, I always have a hard time conforming. I always have a hard time thinking that rules that were made for everybody else are always going to... Uh, just, uh, just you know, fit me too. Um, so, anyways, completely uh, understand you. You know what I mean, dude? I mean, you can't, you can't say, you know, like this. We're all different. You can't set like one rule and say this is going to apply towards everybody and have it be true. You can't. I mean, you can, you can round off. You can use averages and shit like that. But we're all too different. Exactly. Me being a six foot four white boy, I'm, I'm not going to drop an end bomb, uh, especially when the brothers around. There is another example of that. That's, that is an example of the power that, that words have, the, the strength uh, that we give words to allow them to be offensive. I mean, really, you can't even use the word, even if you're only talking about it as a word. you still got to call it to you. you know, it's, that's crazy. Hey, who's that? That was awesome. What was that? I don't know. That wasn't me coughing. Was it somebody on the line coughing? <laughs> if, uh, if you tried to call through because... Fellas, you know, how's it going? Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Speak. Hey, uh, real quick, uh, love the program. You're doing an incredible job in radio in your first go round, RVD. Love the program already. You got a you got a definitely weekly listener here. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks for the energy, dude. Real quick, Chris. Two quick questions for you. Number one, what city in West Virginia were you in when you got uh, burned? You know what? I can't. We were in the middle of uh, probably absolute nowhere, with as it is with most of these indie shows. But I uh, I was about an hour and a half out of uh, Charleston Airport over there in uh, West Virginia. The guy's oh. name was uh, Dennis Richardson. Uh, Joey Mercury put it once, Chris never knows where he's at. No, no. <laughs> and that is true. But, but I was about an hour and a half outside of Charleston, and uh, this guy is pretty notorious. So, I mean, that's, uh, that's you know, wherever the heck that was, it was within that, uh, that region. Anybody Good deal. Else? And Chris, uh, other quick question. Um, I heard that um, through the grapevine and some of the websites, you recently did a, a little bit or some sort of a program with a, uh, Chris Angel. Is that true? Uh, I, who said that? That's crazy. No. They I said mean, you were on. They said you were on. That's news to me, brother. That yeah, they, I, RVD. Here's. Christopher Maybe he found a way to escape the master lock. Go that would be a good thing. What was that last comment? Well, RVD, what I was going to tell you is I heard that he was on a Chris Angel episode or they were trying to work him in the mind freak. Chris was going to do a magic trick and try to regrow hair on top of this guy's head. Oh, what do you think about that? What, what, did, you, what did you say? Hey, man, sir, I'll tell you. Um, everything that guy just said is bullshit. Everything that guy just said is bullshit. Thank you. <laughs> All right, dude. Well, listen, the show is about to end. If you weren't able to get through, I'm sorry. We'll try to have it fixed by next week. 
Thank you, Chris Masters. Thank you, Sean Stasiak. And you can always leave me a message. Go to robvandam.com. Check out RVD TV. You can look at the previews there and get a total idea of 40 some episodes. And uh, leave me a comment on my yeah. MySpace slash Five Star Comics dot com. Uh, you know, and sorry you didn't get through, but uh, that's where you can get a hold of me. Have a great fucking week, and we'll do this again next time. What do you think, Chris? Fuck yeah. Drop that down! Drop that down!